It's midnight, I'm red, I'm wet, I'm wild. Let's talk about Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Someone on the Twitterverse made a template for a theoretical Marvel vs. Capcom 4 roster, and I decided to fill it out, and I spent too much time on it, so now I'm going to make a video because I thought I put way too much thought into this. Most of it is blacked out right now in editing, so... Uh, you're just gonna have to find out what I put on it or you can just like skip to the end or something when making a roster for a crossover game like this the first priority that I had was to uh, represent a diverse range of like characters from each different company so sometimes rosters like this can skew more towards like well what's coming out at the time what's popular and there is certainly some of that on this list and it is important to represent you know, what's going on at the current moment, like what's big at the moment, um, because that is part of the each company's history is the present. Uh, I did try to get a good amount of variety and not just include things that were super popular for marketing purposes, uh, because I think that's nice. I arranged these mostly by series or, you know, like rough grouping so to begin with on the marvel side is uh all of the x-men starting with cyclops uh cyclops has a pretty uh infamous and long history in the versus series mostly from his uh his existence in marvel 2 uh marvel 2 is very important to the overall sort of mythos of the versus series and because he's good in it and he was the poster uh poster character for the x-men for those games he has the, the the famous handshake with ryu uh i think it would be very nice to include him back in the uh versus series uh he is also more popular i feel now with uh, mainstream peoples because because disney owns x-men now they own the distribution to x-men for uh, for non-comic stuff uh and this so they're willing to do stuff with them now and Cyclops is in uh, X-Men 97, so people are just generally more accepting of Cyclops <laughs> uh, than perhaps, I don't know, they, he was not included in Marvel 3, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, who was included in Marvel 3? Wolverine. Wolverine is also another sort of obligatory pick, uh, more obligatory than Cyclops probably, uh, just due to his sheer popularity. He's just sort of a fan favorite who should be in every game. We're not going to talk about infinite we're going to try not to talk about infinite <laughs> basically a shoe in in any game that he can appear in for licensing reasons uh just too popular not to include next up i went with two it was kind of difficult i wanted to include a, a decent amount of x-men uh now that they are because they are such a popular part of the marvel a universe and uh, it was a little bit tough figuring out exactly which ones I wanted and which ones not to include. I went, I'll do these next two with uh, Rogue and Gambit uh, up next. Uh, they're just popular characters uh, at Rogue. There's not too, too many female characters on the Marvel side, so I thought it would be nice to include Rogue. Uh, in addition to just people liking her a lot. Gambit is also another very popular, cool character. People just like seeing Gambit. He does this, this, just this cool factor with his whole fighting style and the stat. He's just, <laughs> he's just like designed to be cool. Um, it was very difficult. I might have, if I was going to replace one of them, I might replace Gambit with like a night, like Nightcrawler or something um, to get like a, you know, another sort of, acrobatic fighter on the roster also nightcrawler is just really cool uh it's the one sort of alternate that i would pick for gambit but he is a fan favorite so i don't think anyone would be really that upset at his inclusion next is a i was originally going to include storm and then i had a change of heart when i looked up on my wall and i looked at the uh i have a poster of the side panel art for marvel vs. capcom 1 and jubilee is on it <laughs> And I said, why hasn't Jubilee been playable in one of these games? You know, she is another character who is very well liked, who has just just because of happenstance or whatever, never quite made it into one of these games as a fully playable character, even though I, she could make for a very cool fighting game character with like her whole visual style of the fireworks and everything. Uh, and also, uh, she just, she's a, a big part of the animated series from the 90s and X-Men 97. So uh, that series coming back has 
brought her into a little more, uh, I guess, just modern appreciation. Jubilee is also one of those characters who I, I would just describe as, like, a feel-good character, you know? Like... Maybe you wouldn't immediately jump to Jubilee being in a fighting game, but as so I feel like as, if, as soon as you saw the cover or something, or you saw the roster and you saw that Jubilee was on there, you go a lot of a lot of people would go, ah, I like Jubilee, nice, that's cool, that's cool, uh, yeah, that makes me feel nice that she's in the game, that she's represented, uh, and I think it's just it's nice to have a character like that that you just you just like to see them getting some play. Next up is another obligatory one. It's Magneto. I feel like he has to be in all of these games uh, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, he is another just absolute shoe-in character on so many different levels. He is one of the most popular Marvel villains. He is the most popular and well-known X-Men villain, and X-Men are a big part of, of Marvel and their image. Uh, and he has a very long history in the Versus series. He is top tier in marvel 2 he is top tier in marvel 3 um you know infamously so uh but he is he is so popular and he is so prevalent that when people like when fighting game players think of the the identity the gameplay what is playing marvel versus capcom like they think of magneto they think of the freaking eight-way dash and the tri jumps uh, and doing these insane unseeable 50 50 mixes <laughs> of going high low and left right and they think of Magneto. He is like, he is so, he shapes the image of this series. And so not having him in one of the games, it, it just, feel, it feels like something's just missing. You know, it just feels like it's missing. And I got, I snuck in one more X-Men villain. It's Juggernaut. Uh, this is a personal bias thing. I won't lie. I think a lot of people like Juggernaut, but he's here because I like Juggernaut. Uh, I play him in Marvel too. I think he is really cool. I think it's fun. I just, I just love big, big body brawler characters. I, uh, what can I say? I think they're, they're fun. There is something inherently appealing to me about them, and it's nice to get a little, a little more. I tried to, to evenly space the hero and villain representation. The reality of lists like these is that doing a crossover when you're representing a series, you're usually going to go with the main character of that series. Therefore, uh, it's easy to become a little more um, skewed towards the, the hero side, you know, the protagonist side. So I think having Juggernaut in here would be a cool villain pick. Uh, and uh, our first big body character of the roster, which there, which there are a, a couple more. Next up is sort of like a grouping of the Avengers sort of characters or Avengers adjacent ones. The obvious picks to begin with, Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Captain Marvel. These are like real poster child characters. Uh, Marvel in recent years has really been making an effort to push uh, Iron Man and Captain Marvel as being sort of their leading like male and female characters. Iron Man, of course, because of his popularity in the movies and Captain Marvel because her name is Marvel, I guess. It just makes sense. Marvel would want to have all these characters in there. It, it, it's a given. Uh, Black Panther. Black Panther was probably one of the coolest inclusions in the Infinite roster. And uh, for good reason. It, it's kind of crazy that it took so long for him to be included in one of these games. Um, but he, this is a, an extremely popular character uh, from his movie. And just there's just sort of a general fandom around Black Panther as a character. He's got a great look. He has a cool fighting style that lends itself very well to a fighting game. Uh, a little bit of a almost Wolverine type, you know? I think it's fine to have a little bit of overlap in the roster with these sort of, like, uh, animalistic, jump-at-you-rush-down, slashy-slashy types of characters. Um, but Black Panther is just... You could easily make him unique from Wolverine. Uh, and make him, uh, gameplay-wise, his own thing. Uh, just another character who is like, oh, yeah, cool, Black Panther, awesome. Love to see him on the roster. Uh, that kind of reaction from an audience. Hulk? You have to have Hulk. All of these games have Hulk. He is the, he is the resident, he is literally, like, the prototypical Marvel Comics big body character. He is a big hulking bruiser. He fulfills a, I guess there's a little bit of overlap between him and Juggernaut, but again, Eh, you can differentiate between them. Um, 
I like these kinds of characters. And Hulk is just sort of an... He's just an obligatory pick. He's an obligatory pick. Um, he has to be in the game. <laughs> She-Hulk. She-Hulk is a character who... Um, I think that her inclusion in Marvel 3 was really cool. Unfortunately, she isn't very popular in that game because she's not great. Um, and she's a little hard to play. Some, something about She-Hulk... This isn't like a like a lecherous thing. <laughs> Something about She-Hulk is just I really like seeing her in stuff. She's sort of this character. I don't know. There's some sort of very like underdog aspect to She-Hulk. It might be because um her name is is literally like hitching hitching its ride to Hulk's name. <laughs> and so you like want her. It feels like she's perpetually in his shadow. <laughs> That's what I've always felt like, at least. So seeing her in stuff and and fighting, and the fact that she would have, she does have her her own fighting style. And gameplay wise, I think she is cool in Marvel Three. I think she's really cool. Um, that differentiates her from Hulk. I don't know another character that I think would just get a real positive reaction from people who you might not immediately think of her when you think of Marvel, but uh, uh, uh nonetheless one that you go, oh, cool, she Hulk. You know, that sort of that sort of feeling. And then Deadpool, uh, I don't know. Deadpool is, 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 I'm surprised he wasn't in Marvel Infinite. Um, maybe some people are a little sick of Deadpool. Uh, I believe the super combo wiki for him in Marvel 3 says something like, the pros are that you get to listen to Deadpool's dialogue during gameplay. And the cons of playing him are that you have to listen to his dialogue during gameplay. <laughs> but nevertheless, he is very popular. I think it's it's he's just like a generally uh, very well-liked character. And also from a... I mean, he's got a new movie coming out with Wolverine. So uh, uh, just a very like a big draw for the series is like, oh, cool, Deadpool's playable. A lot of those types of picks are, are kind of loaded into this first half of the list, I think. It'll get a little... Uh, a little different later on. Uh, we're about to be very short, very shortly. Um, also, Deadpool from a gameplay perspective fulfills an important kind of niche, which I think is he's a very flexible character. He lends himself to a very uh, generalist, flexible play style. You know, close range attacks, uh, lots of flashy, stylish combos, guns and projectiles and stuff like that. Uh, and so having a character like that in a game who can, you can, oh, you can just sort of fit Deadpool on your team in like a lot of different positions. I'm assuming that this is still like in the style of, uh, the like Marvel 2, Marvel 3, uh, uh, games where, you know, it's actually team based. It's an actual tag fighter. That's a nice character to have on the roster and Deadpool kind of fills that, that slot very nicely along with a couple other uh, characters who will, you'll see later on in the list. Thor! Thor! It's so weird that it took until Marvel 3 for him to show up in one of these games. Uh, but yeah, he is just, I mean, he's a, he's like a, a main Avenger. He is an important part of the comics, an important part of, um, the movie series, the, the, the movie universe, and, uh, he represents a cool part of the Marvel universe, which is its ties to, like, or its influences from mythology. He is literally part of this whole pantheon of mythological Norse-inspired uh, Norse mythology characters. Um, and again, like, you know, the breadth of what Marvel Comics really encapsulates, uh, he is just, uh, uh, it's good to have him at the front, like, the sheer variety of stuff that is on offer in that world. And then... I can't believe he, he he hasn't been in one of these games. Loki. So another villain rep and one who is pretty unique in a lot of ways. So Loki is very popular, uh, owing a lot of that to his portrayal by Tom Hiddleston in the movies. Uh, people think Loki is just, he's just like a sort of a, he's, he's a fun, he, it's a fun sort of character to have in the mix because he's a, he's a trickster god. And so he has this sort of, tricky almost uh, a jester personality where he's messing with people he's he's devious and scheming uh and it's sort of a different kind of villain as opposed to someone like uh magneto who's like oh, i am oh, i'm uh, i'm a revolutionary or, or juggernaut who's like a big brute guy um Loki has a different feel to him. He is a like smaller less physically imposing character and that sort of ties into uh, another thing that's really neat 
about him and it would be neat about him in a game like this, which is that Loki has a great potential for a fighting game move set. Uh, he is the type of character that I think game designers are really excited to work on because he's not a traditional uh, fighter. You have to actually like, oh, you have to get kind of creative with how you translate his powers into uh, a combat system like this. So, I mean, he's in that like Marvel Overwatch ripoff. And from what I've heard, he's really interesting in that game. And he's actually like, he's got a really cool move set and, and whole design thing. And as a designer and as a player, like you just, your mind just starts going with ideas of like deception and shape shifting and making illusions and making like clones of himself and teleporting around. And there's so much potential for, for cool stuff that you can do with him and, and visually, uh, game, just gameplay wise neat neat things uh, I think he'd be a perfect fit for for a fighting game uh, maybe maybe not one <laughs> like because he's not a direct kind of like hand-to-hand -hand fighter you might not Im immediately think that when you think of Loki but I think when you start putting it into, like how would you implement him uh, you're like oh man I'd love to see that next up is a, a another slightly greedy pick a little a slightly biased pick it's adam warlock <laughs> so i am a big adam warlock fan uh the whole adam warlock uh jim starlin run is somewhere behind me on like my shelf or like a stack of books i have down there um i'm a big fan of the character and and that his interpretation uh jim starlin's interpretation of him uh, adam warlock is not okay if you've only known him <laughs> through the movies like the guardians of the galaxy or uh, guardians of the galaxy 3 hey i like those movies i like three a lot it's probably my favorite of them uh that is not a good representation of this character <laughs> he's a fine character for the purposes of that movie but as an adaptation no he's completely different he's completely different in the comics <laughs> I would describe Adam Warlock uh, in the comics, in those original Jim Starlin runs, as um, what what if Jesus didn't know he was the son of God and was just super mopey about it? <laughs> uh, he is really interesting and he's an important part of the of the Marvel universe in that he is sort of a and, and especially on this roster he is a representative of like the sort of cosmic aspect of of marvel which has been becoming a larger and larger part of their movies as they're trying to kind of expand the scope of what they what the stories can be about uh and adam warlock is just a gateway into that uh he is most of his adventures take place in in space or on alien worlds or alternate dimensions and things like that uh, he is very heavily involved in the original Infinity Saga and all that, uh, and I just I just think he's cool. I I don't I, I don't want to have to sit here and justify why Adam Warlock is cool. Um, and then gameplay wise, now you might think that this is a bit of a, a a little bit tough or a little bit uninteresting, I should say, because Warlock has a very general superhero power set. He you know. His powers aren't really the interesting part of him. Uh, he's got like the soul stone in his in his forehead, which can like suck up people's souls and stuff, and like destroy them. Which they gave that to Vision in the movies. You know, he's he's basically just he can fly. He's super strong. He's super dur uh, durable. Um, heightened senses and all that. And there's nothing like super unique about him. Uh, but I think that gameplay wise, he could kind of be this game's version of Nova. Nova is not on this roster, and I think that um, Warlock could serve as that sort of like he's got a very general power power set and and move list. Yeah, he's just sort of like an all rounder who can another much like Deadpool, another flexible character who can be stuck onto a lot of different teams in just any any sort of position. You know, you can sort of make him work. Uh, that kind of a character is is another good thing to have to sort of balance out the roster. And I, I have, underneath Warlock, I have placed Thanos because, hey, uh, Thanos was introduced... Well, he was he was like an Iron Man villain or something in like a one-off, like a one-off issue. Um, that's where his like first appearance was or, or something like that. But really, he was introduced as like a real character with like 
motives and stuff in in uh adam warlock in in warlock's book so um i, I i'll group him there <laughs> i'll put him under 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 adam uh thanos is another at this point obligatory character i don't th i think you could make 10 more marvel versus capcom games and thanos would have to be in every single one of them uh it is kind of weird because i do remember a world before the marvel universe was really was really big you know iron man came out when i was a kid um but it, it did take a while for them to, to build up to that and and i was already aware of characters like thanos because i was just you know into like old marvel comics and stuff like that when i was when i was young when i was a kid uh and it is genuinely a little surreal to live in a world where uh thanos is, the character thanos is on par with like darth vader in terms of of pop culture villains you know a character which might sound like a lot but no think about it like like people refer people refer casual like normal people like non super nerds will refer to like like a Thanos snap. Oh, I it got Thanos snapped out of existence, or that's just become like a part of 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 common parlance. Is to say like it got snapped out of existence, like in reference to freaking Infinity War. That's crazy. Like, like people, there are a whole generation, two generations, three generations of people know who Thanos is. Uh, and that's a little wild. And a character with that level of cultural uh, saturation is, uh, you would have to include him. On top of him just being an important part of Marvel and all that. Um, so yeah, Thanos. I, I <laughs> uh, Of course he's going to be in. So the next one is our Fantastic Four rep. Now, Fantastic Four has a weird and slightly sordid history in the Marvel series in that they were never they never quite ended up in there for one reason or another. The if you go back and you read a lot of old developer interviews, you can tell that a lot of the guys at Capcom really liked Fantastic Four and and they wanted to represent them in some way, but for one reason or another, it just never quite worked out. You know, you I think in like Marvel 3 they wanted to they wanted to do something like represent them all as like they wanted to get like all of them and they were like no that's like four slots it's like a lot <laughs> and then they had the idea to combine them into like a single slot that would be every single like all four members of them uh and then that was just like a, that was just too ridiculous for a game that's already like a team of 3 uh and then eventually they were like, okay, well, let's just do Human Torch. And then, a pan, and then Human Torch's visual flame effects were too much for the hardware of the time to handle. So they had to scrap him. And apparently a bunch of his, I think it's theorized that like a, a lot of his uh, Torch's stuff got repurposed into Nova, which would make a lot of sense. Uh, but then they eventually just settled on, okay, let's just do Super Scroll. Because Super Scroll has, like, all of their powers, so that's our way of representing all of the Fantastic Four. Uh, and it's like, ugh, okay, geez, what a what a story. Uh, they keep getting so close to making it in, and they are such a big part of Marvel's history. And they're super cool, I love the Fantastic Four. Um, now, I did not make the crazy decision, any of the crazy decisions they made with, like, let's have all of them, or let's have all of them be in, like, one character slot. I just decided, okay, I feel like there's enough room to fit one Fantastic Four family member on here. And of them, I decided to go with Thing. Uh, because I love Thing. Uh, I think he's cool. <laughs> I like I like the I like big fellas. I like the big fellas. Uh the big body characters are always appealing to me in these games. Um I think Thing is also just a a, a pretty popular character. I don't think anyone really would not that many people would complain about him getting in uh you could maybe replace him with human torch you could maybe replace him with mr fantastic sue would be a little hard <laughs> invisible girl would maybe be a little bit hard to work into a fighting game move set um uh, but i i went with thing he also serves as the main uh move set wise i think a way to distinguish him from hulk or juggernaut is he wouldn't be as much of a of a brawler or a bruiser as much as i, I think you could position him as marvel the marvel sides 
uh, main grappler. He's sort of like, I think his, his his fighting style kind of lends very well to like he just kind of plants himself in the ground and he just fuck he just tackles you. You know, he tackles you and he pulls you down and he grapples you to the ground. <laughs> um, that's why I went with thing. And then, of course, obligatorily, Doctor Doom, uh, one of the most popular Marvel villains. Uh, one of the most popular Marvel characters. He is he is a, a a fan favorite among fan favorites, and especially in the Marvel versus Capcom series, uh, almost like his his legacy is I mean, he is as much a fighting game character at this point as he is a Marvel character. He is he is considered very strong in Marvel two. He is really really good in Marvel three, uh, but he's also just sort of one of those characters that. No one really hates, you know, because the ways in which he's good don't really like, I don't know, like he, he isn't a very despised character in those games because he's usually just good in the sense that like, oh, you tag into him and he's just, he just does a big combo and then you tag out into someone else, right? And he's got some really good assists. Uh, so th there isn't, despite being a top tier, there isn't even that much resentment for him as a character. Um, it's just, it's just one of those dudes who was like, this was one of the, the biggest holes in the infinite roster to, to bring it up. You know, <laughs> I said, I wasn't going to, but this was one of the big holes that people felt. And it's because when you think of Marvel again, much like Magneto, a lot of people think of doom. A lot of people think of doom. If he is available to use a shoe in. Okay. So these next four are the. Spider-Man, the, the main, like, Spider-Man representation. I think most of them are, are self-explanatory, but... <laughs> but, uh, I have made... This is probably the most disagreeable choice I've made on the list. I feel like if this was a real game with, a, with this roster that I've picked out, this would be the most controversial part of it, I think. Uh, and that is that I have foregone Peter Parker Spider-Man, and I am just going with Miles Morales. So the reason for that is a couple fold. Number one, uh, Miles is cool. He is also named Spider-Man. Uh, and I think that as I just, I just, I wanted to, he's been getting a lot more play in recent years with, uh, the Spider-Verse movies with the Miles Morales and the Spider-Man 2, uh, PlayStation games. He is, uh, he's just, he's, he's, he's more people know about him now than ever before. And I think that also, so number one, I just think he's cool for that reason. Like, I think it would be neat to include him in, in a fighting game roster and represent his sort of permutation of the spider powers. Uh, and, and, and also I think that if you were going to replace Peter with anyone, Miles is a, is a good pick. Uh, there is, this is interestingly because of the amount of, of rep that he's gotten in recent years. Um, there is a whole generation of kids for whom, uh, Peter and Miles are both like equally valid Spider-Man, Spider-Men. Uh, you know, people will say things like, oh, this is my, any character who's had, who's had multiple different iterations or actors play them or something like that. Uh, this is, this is my Spider-Man. My Spider-Man is the, um, Sam Raimi one. Uh, my, my Spider-Man is the, the animated series one or something like that. Uh, nowadays because of the Spider-Verse movies and the fact that both of them are like very prevalent in there, uh, there are, are kids today who can say that like, oh yeah, when I think of Spider-Man, I think of these two characters and not just, not just the one, but I think of, of two. So if there was any time that I think would be easiest to sell people on a Miles Morales, um, and not having Peter, it would probably be around now. Um, so that's my justification. Uh, if you wanted to replace him with Peter, I would get it. You know, Marvel might mandate that. Who knows if you were to realistically work with them. They would say, no, you have to do Peter. I don't know. They, they might be weird about it. Um, but yeah, I, I would, if you said, no, I replace him with Peter. I'm not going to fight you very much on it. <laughs> I'm just going to make my, my case for Miles. Next up is Gwen, Spider Gwen or Ghost Spider, which I like Ghost Spider a lot more as like a superhero name. I think that's much cooler. But hey, Spider Gwen is like, that's what everyone knows now. Um... So Gwen is another very, very popular character. And again, I feel like 
this is a good time. I don't think anyone would really be that upset to see her her on the roster. I saw a comment on like Reddit or something that I thought was kind of funny, which is that, you know, like I said before, Marvel has been trying to push Captain Marvel as their leading female character. But in terms of actual like fan popularity, Gwen is probably more that <laughs> Gwen is, is probably a better pick for that. She has a good, she has a cool design. Um, she has recently in the comics, as I understand it, has uh, now her suit is based around like the symbiote, like her own universe's version of the symbiote. So you can do some symbiote stuff with her to differentiate her from, let's say, the more vanilla Spider-Man power set that like Miles or Peter might have. Gwen is also, this sounds so cynical, but Gwen is also like, I don't know, very popular with like women. <laughs> She's probably, worth, I think, everyone. Um, but I, this is like another another thing. Like, let's be real. I think that most fighting games are probably going to appeal majority to like a male audience. And this is like a character that like, oh, like, you know. Uh, my girlfriend loves Gwen, and if she saw her on a roster, she would get super excited. Um, it's it's just, you know, it, it would be a nice kit. Like, it would make a certain demographic happy, and also just other people, you know, in general. So, that sounds horribly cynical, like I'm a marketing executive or something. Uh, but, I don't know, I think... I think that's like, I don't know, I think it's legitimate. <laughs> I think chicks would go crazy for it. <laughs> uh, and then, third off, Venom. Uh, Venom was one of the biggest, biggest missing characters in Marvel 3, <laughs> it feels like. It's like, oh, where's Venom, man? Why do we only get Spider-Man? Venom's super popular. Everyone likes Venom. I like Venom. Uh, he has a, a very different, I think gameplay-wise, you could sort of create a gradient of, like, symbiote-ness in a character's moveset, uh, where Miles slash Peter, you know um is like the least and then gwen is sort of in the middle like she could have a little bit of symbiote stuff and then venom is like all symbiote and all that and he's obviously physically he's a much bigger character he's more of like a power character you know uh so i think venom would be i every almost obligatory again i'm using the word obligatory a lot but when you're making a roster like this there are characters who are just like Dude, they gotta be in. Venom is one of those one of those characters. Everyone likes him. And then fourth is Green Goblin. You know, I think so. Of the villain, uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, he is uh, the, probably the most infamous Spider-Man villain next to Venom. Right? Venom is is and and even then, Venom is kind of like. You know, sometimes he's an anti-hero. Sometimes he's an ally to Spider-Man. But Goblin is like. Goblin is like always like he is the prototypical uh Spider-Man villain. He is like Spider-Man's devil, you know? <laughs> he is his Satan, his enemy. And uh uh I think for to represent the character and his his series and his books and history, uh Goblin is is the go-to villain pick. Who's not Venom, you know? The go-to like pure villainy pick and then also uh of the villains that are represented on this list a lot of them are like really really big like high level like thanos loki like like literal gods and stuff or these incredibly magneto can freaking alter the magnetic poles of the earth and stuff and <laughs> cause mass catastrophes goblin is just a guy with a glider a high-tech glider and some bombs and stuff and he's he's not a pushover obviously but he's more of like a what people would call like a street level he's much closer to that and i think representing that um smaller scale like like you know green goblin is gonna like blow up a bridge or something thanos wants to kill the universe like these are different <laughs> these are different scales that they're operating at and i think representing that um is 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 uh uh worthwhile on on the marvel side of the roster i also think gameplay wise goblin could be really cool um the idea of a character who would be on some sort of a glider all the time or maybe most of the time you could do something where like oh he maybe he has to use his glider like he has to spend it 
to use to, to do some sort of really powerful move or some sort of strong option and then he has to fight on foot and maybe he's a little weaker until he gets the glider back or so i don't know i'm just spitballing ideas um, another character I think much like Loki who would be very fun for designers to work around and and um, uh, create a good adaptation of how he fights in the comics when you're confined to like a 2D stage. If it was me, I would give him like a Morrigan dash. And something about that is just really funny to me. That Green Goblin would have a Morrigan dash. So, yeah. <laughs> Goblin. Uh, next up... And these sort of the rest of this list isn't from any particular series. It's kind of just a lot of like individual picks that I wanted to uh, throw in there for, you know, these aren't in any part of any particular grouping. These are, these are sort of like individual, unique one-off types of characters who don't neatly fit, well, for the most part, uh, into a single like group or something like that. So first off, Moon Knight. Moon Knight is a character who has gotten a lot more attention in recent years due to, uh, well, number one, there there was the uh, generally well-received live-action series with Oscar Isaac. Uh, I heard people mostly liked that, so that's cool. Uh, he is also, uh, I guess, just more appreciation for the more modern comic runs that he's in and people realizing that Moon Knight's actually pretty cool, you know? Uh, I think a lot of people in it, like when I first heard of Moon Knight, the way it was pitched to me was not very flattering. It was the character was essentially like Marvel's Batman ripoff, uh, and he was very obscure. He was kind of a C-list character, but I, I just the name is his name is Moon Knight. That rules, dude. And you look at his design, and he's so cool looking with the hood and the color scheme and everything, and he's so sick looking. Um, and yes, it turns out yeah, there's a lot of really good Moon Knight stories. Uh, that people have become much more aware of uh, in recent times. So representing him would be just just one of those like, oh, sick Moon Knight, you know? Uh, he's also a sort of like uh, close quarters and gadgets fighter, which is something that is uh, otherwise kind of missing from this roster. Most characters either have some kind of power that they rely entirely or mostly on um, or some sort of like technological suit or they're magical or they use guns and swords or something like that um moon knight has lots of like tricky little gadgets and that he mixes into his close quarters uh martial arts style of fighting you could call it martial arts you know visually and i think gameplay wise as well would give him uh, a unique distinction on the roster another character who sort of lends themselves to a kind of all-rounder sort of archetype next is scarlet witch who is like and i said this was sort of like for one-offs um, she was a bit of a, a late addition. I, I made this list mostly in order and then sort of regrouped it a little bit, but I did kind of leave her near the end. So eh, maybe I would put her more with the X-Men or the Avengers. She's, she's been floating around there. Uh, so Doctor Strange is not on this list. I made the decision to omit him, not because I hate Doctor Strange or anything. I think he's cool. I think his inclusions in three and infinite are neat, you know, but, um, as a, as a character, I think I could go a game where he's not in i i don't think anyone's gonna cry about strange not being on the roster um and scarlet <laughs> excuse me scarlet witch is not quite the same sort of spell caster you know she kind of is but but you know strange is much more of like he's well he's a wizard you know scarlet witch is doing like hexes and stuff like that but she is like a, a spell casting magical type of character who hasn't had too much representation most of the other characters on here are like mutants isn't she a mutant she is a mutant but she's like a magical mutant but eh, let's ignore that you know they have they have like some kind of magic power not magic power fuck <laughs> uh mutant power or um they're just, they're just really strong or they have technique or technology or some, something of that sort. She is like a spellcaster and that's uh, her defining identity and having that kind of a character on the roster adds a little bit of variety, um, shows off that part of the Marvel Universe as well, which I think is important. And uh, she is also uh, a part of the modern films and she has her T she had the TV series and all that. So I think including her on here would just be kind of like, yeah, no, that makes sense. That's a good, I think that's a solid pick. Next up, I guess I could have included this with the Spider-Man villains, but it's, it's Sandman. <laughs> 
Um, Sandman, maybe you could consider him just a general New York villain. Eh, I don't know. Again, I, I a lot of these final picks were not quite organized with the rest of uh with the rest of the roster. Uh, Sandman is a another much like Goblin, but even more so. He is a really street level character. Goblin is almost he, he's like a a super villain compared to Sandman. Um, super villain. <laughs> I mean, in the sense that like you know, again, Goblin's doing pretty big stuff. Sandman is robbing banks. And that's cool. That's a cool level of a character to have on the roster with all these gods and 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 crazy high tech weirdos and and freaks. Uh, having a guy who just robs banks is is a is a refreshing change of pace. Some nice diversity to what sorts of characters are represented here. Um, a lot. It didn't have to be Sandman. There's other. I think Spider Man's really good for villains like this because a lot of Spider Man's villains are guy who robs banks. There's Shocker. Shocker's got some fans. I'm not really one of them, but I I I, I can respect it. Uh, there's like Scorpion. You know, there's characters like that. I went with Sandman, um, namely because uh, I've always just I've always just really liked Sandman. Uh, Spider Man Three came out when I was a kid. And the visuals and animations of Sandman always stuck with me of like him morphing and turning into the sand. And, and it's just really cool. I think a lot like Venom and the symbiote stuff, people are just, there's something really appealing. People just love this style or this gimmick with a character where their body can like morph into different weapons and stuff like spawn or something like that. Uh, people just dig it. There's something inherently cool about that. And I love the fact that you're doing it with like sand that can become like super hard. Like it can be very amorphous and soft and like he can absorb bullets and things like that, but also he can make it super hard and, and sturdy like rock. It, it's cool. I think it it would create a lot of cool, um, really fun visually. I would love to see a whole move set designed around, you know, shape shifting into like different sand and stuff. I think it would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, Sandman. That's my that's my. I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of play style he would have. Uh, who knows? But something something kind of unique, a unique kind of character. Next up is Daredevil. So Daredevil fulfills a role that is otherwise, like, there aren't too many characters who I think really fit it, which is that he is an acrobatic fighter. Uh, his, main the his main deal is flipping and dipping and doing close quarters combat with, like, his sticks and stuff. Um, at first, you might think, like, oh, well, how much does he have to really draw on for a moveset? Well, besides the physical techniques and stuff. I think there's a lot of cool ways that you could adapt his super hearing to um to a to a fighting game character. I can come up with concepts about like oh what if he has to do something to like lock on to the enemy sound. And then once he has he gets like guard points like he could just auto evade certain attacks or something cuz he hears them incoming or he can just like zip to towards them because he knows where they are or something like that. Uh, you could, even if it was just something very simple, like um, like a counter move, there's ways that you can adapt his unique little traits and, and his heightened senses to uh, to a fighting game. And again, just another, another character to round out the kind of street level fighters, um, another superhero to kind of accompany Miles Morales and the spider peoples. Second to last, is I put Gamora. Now, it doesn't have to be Gamora. I this is just it could be an open it's negotiable in my mind for this could be any of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I put Gamora mainly because uh I think she's cool. She's green. I like green. Uh and she has a cool version in she has a very cool rendition in Marvel Infinite. She's a neat character in that game. But this could be, I mean, Rocket Raccoon has been in the previous two games. You could easily bring him back. People like him. Uh, it could be Star-Lord. Star-Lord is another popular character. You can do Drax. Drax might be a little harder to get people excited about. Um, but, you know, you, you have a range of characters from the Guardians of the Galaxy who could reasonably fit into this spot. I just kind of wanted to include them on here because, again, a little more, a little more cosmic representation and characters who just go on space adventures can you hear that ambulance in the background jesus so yeah gamora but it's negotiable put your favorite guardian of the galaxy character here and then finally finally to round out the marvel roster it's blade 
Blade is a character who I think a lot of people, I feel like if you if you saw Blade was on the roster, I think he's a real pop-off character. You know, I reserve this last spot for the pop-off. Uh, he is, uh, he is, is due to the Wesley Snipes movies, uh, namely the, really the first one. Um, he is just this, he is an infinitely cool character. He is, he will forever be cool. He will forever trigger this kind of like, oh, sick reaction from people. Uh, he, you could compare him maybe to Deadpool in like, oh, gun and sword character, uh, Gamora is also kind of like that. Uh, but you could easily, I mean, as a vampire, you could include tons of weird vampire powers and things like that. Um, lots of things to, to vary up his moveset and, and his gameplay identity. And just, just, I think for the general pop-off factor of how cool it is to include, to include a character like Blade, uh, in a fighting game, uh, I think he would just, I think he'd just make a perfect fit. I think it's just it's a real crowd pleaser of a character. I don't think anyone would be very upset to see him uh, in a game. So this is the Marvel side of the roster. Uh, I think that it covers a pretty good spread of the universe. I think it takes a lot of fan favorites. I think it has a couple more obscure characters that I think are cool. Uh, a lot of characters that people might not expect, but will would would still be pleasing <laughs> you know would, would still get a positive reception and um just and also a little bit of personal bias on my end and to be fair finding game developers employ a lot of personal bias when they're making rosters <laughs> so let's not act like i'm not thinking like a game dev <laughs> let's not act like this is not realistic <laughs> if i was the director that's going to get heavier when we get into the capcom side You'll know. <laughs> I think this is a pretty good representation of the Marvel Universe. Uh, classic stuff, multiple different parts of it. The X-Men, the Avengers, cosmic stuff, uh, kind of low-level street street stuff. Uh, the mythological stuff with Thor and Loki. And a couple cool unique picks in there that might be unexpected. So that's my, that's my lock-in. And now we have the Capcom side. So this one... Honestly, it was a lot harder. This one was a lot more difficult because choosing how to represent, like, what do you really focus on? What are the categories you even come up with for representing Capcom, right? Is it based on age, based on series, based on popularity, based on platform, you know? I generally tried to go with a sort of mix of all of them. I, I, I think I made something good. <laughs> There are, there are probably, there are some losers and it's just impossible. Like, okay, this is a 60 character roster in total, 30 for each. And I'm assuming that this roster is like, <laughs> realistically, this would be a complete season of like, after all, all the DLC is out. I don't imagine any fighting game these days is releasing with 60 characters unless your name is Smash Brothers. So this is like the full game and it was, it was tough to fit everything in there. Um, but I, I think I did an okay job. So first off, I wanted to represent mainly like what would I consider the pillars of modern, modern Capcom? What are the series that really represent them, that they push, that are big revenue sources for them? Uh, what are, what's getting the crossovers, you know, in other stuff? And so first off, pretty obviously, Street Fighter uh, and, and Ryu. <laughs> so... Ryu, the main character, the poster boy of, of I said almost said Capcom. Capcom, yes. And uh, Street Fighter. Uh, Ryu is, Ryu and Mega Man have always kind of been sort of jostling for that mascot spot for Capcom. Of like when Capcom, you know, Capcom needs to get a character in Fortnite. Who do they put in? They put in Ryu. That's like, that's like the given. Uh, up next, a second is Chun-Li. <laughs> Much like how uh, Captain... Marvel, sorry, how much uh, Iron Man and Captain Marvel are like the leading male and female characters for Marvel. Uh, Ryu and Chun Li are uh, pretty much pretty much that for Capcom. You know, they technically they have characters who are technically more popular, who are going to score higher on popularity polls, perhaps. 
Um, well, maybe not Chun Li, but uh, I mean, Chun Li is Chun Li might be at the top. Um, but when again, when Capcom wants to put characters into something, you know, who goes in? Uh, who goes in Fortnite? It's Ryu and Chun Li. Who goes in Power Rangers Battle for the Grid? It's Ryu and Chun Li. Who goes in? Aren't they in like Brawlhalla? Like it's Ryu and Chun Li. Those are the obligatory picks for them. Those are those are the shoe ins. Um, and so you would. I feel I'm, I'm I don't want to spend too much more time justifying something so obvious, but that's how important they are to the company. They they are the characters on the box. Third up, there's only three Street Fighter characters. I went with Cammy. Now there are many characters who could go here. It was a little painful. I wanted to include more Street Fighters, but for the sake of representing a good swath of the company and its history. I had to kind of limit myself. More than three felt a little excessive, and I would have maybe have to start making cuts that I wouldn't want. So I went with Cammy. I would have liked to have put a villain here, you know, Bison, Gil, Seth, um, JP. I don't know if you want to do like the, a modern villain that they've got. There's also a number of other you know non-villains who could go here. Rashid. Rashid would be a perfect pick for a versus game. There's a lot of characters who could have gone here. I went with Cammy mainly because she's a good fit for the Versus series. She has an interesting connection to the Versus series in that her Killer B, the image I've used here is of her Killer B outfit, the blue and yellow. And that debuted in X-Men or Versus Street Fighter or Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes Versus Street Fighter. I forget which one. Um... One, but it debuted in one of the Versus games before it was in the Alpha series. So she has this funny kind of connection. And that's this is that's an iconic outfit for, for Cammy. So she has this funny kind of connection to uh to the Versus series. So I just went with her. That's another negotiable spot uh on the roster. You know, yeah, take your pick of a of a third Street Fighter to put in there. Uh second up is uh Resident Evil, what I would consider another pillar of modern day Capcom. They pump out a lot of Resident Evil games. Represented in the first slot, I put Leon. Obvious. <laughs> um, um, of course, Leon. Uh, he is. They did a popularity poll recently, or they, they did they did a big survey, and there were many different polls that they ran within that survey. But Leon was like the top, top one or number two, the the, the top two uh, male characters under Capcom's umbrella um, were Leon and Dante. They swapped spots depending on if it was Japan or worldwide, but like Leon, you gotta have. Uh, the only reason he hasn't been in one of these games is just because of uh, mainly timing, timing issues and go look up the whole history behind why Leon isn't in Marvel 3. It's because of Frank West, <laughs> you know, stepping on the zombie thing, um, the zombie fighting thing. So, uh, uh, Leon nowadays is even more popular. So they went with Chris in that game as, as the replacement, I guess, as the Resident Evil replacement, which made sense at the time. Cause you know, RE5 was the current game. Now I think that it would make a lot more sense because of, uh, the RE2 and 4 remakes to position Leon as like the poster boy for Resident Evil. Um, on top of just his general popularity, he now has two very modern games that star him. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake was a big hit, <laughs> very popular, well-received game. So he's, I think, comfortably back in the limelight as a Resident Evil representative. Second up is Jill. Um, Jill is a character who I think, man... <laughs> <laughs> she has a, a weird history in the Versus series. Personally, I much prefer her Marvel 2 version. That's the that's the artwork that I've used here. Uh, Jill is uh, another like female character for the roster. Uh, the uh, probably maybe next to Ada, the most popular like female most popular female character from RE. I didn't. I, I almost went with Ada, but I decided on Jill because Ada to me is also very much like a an re4 character i know she's in a bunch of other games but like uh i didn't want it to be too, like you think of her her and leon have very concurrent like appearances in games and i wanted to create like a little bit more diversity 
in what Resident Evil games are represented. So Jill, she's in... You almost get, like, a perfect hopscotch, you know? You get, like, Jill is in 1, 3, 5, and then Leon is in 2, 4, and, like, 6, you know? Is Jill in Jill in 6? She probably is. Everyone's in 6. Jill is also in the first game, so you get kind of a nice, like... Almost feels like... And, and, and Leon, this this version of Leon is, like, would, would be the, the RE4 version. Jill, I would prefer, like... I would prefer her, like, Star's incarnation, you know, from the first game. Maybe you could do RE3 Jill. But that would be kind of a nice uh, beginning and middle of the series. And then for the modern version, uh, I have gone with... The modern version of, of Resident Evil, the modern rep, I have gone with Heisenberg from RE8, uh, our, our, our village. So um, initially I was going to go with, like, my, my first thought was, okay... Uh, I wanted a villain character. I haven't had a villain character yet on the on the Capcom side. Um, and to me, it made a lot of sense to go with a modern Resident Evil villain. So not like a Wesker, not like a Nemesis. Those are cool characters, um, but something to represent the newer Resident Evil games, like new characters. Um, and it was I was going to do like Lady Lady Dimitrescu. Dim Dimitrescu? Uh... But from what I what I understand, I'm not an RE expert, so forgive me, forgive my sins. Um, but Heisenberg as like a fighting game character makes a lot more sense. Look, you can include lots of references in like super animations and things like that. She can be in the game in some capacity. Uh, but as an actual fighter, apparently uh, uh, Heisenberg makes a lot more sense. So he kind of finish completes this this other gradient of like. Jill kind of represents original Resident Evil. Leon is a little bit later. And then Heisenberg is like the new stuff. I know Leon is in two, but it would be his four version. Did I say that already? Uh, next up, we have a couple of uh, one-off unique picks um, to add a little bit of a little bit of spice, like pick from this game, this game, that game. Uh, Asura from Asura's Wrath. This is one of those characters who is like, I can't believe he hasn't been in one of these games yet. He lends himself so naturally. Asura's Wrath is a kind of cult classic Capcom game. He's a character that there's definitely going to be a certain portion of the audience, like obviously Street Fighter and RE fans are going to be hyped for their characters. But Asura, there's going to be a certain portion of, of hardcore Capcom fans who are going to Really enjoy seeing him in a game. He lends himself very well to a fighting game move set. He is just he is crazy fighter guy, <laughs> crazy fighter god man, demigod man or whatever he is. Uh, yeah, he's he he he's like he should be in the game. Next is Regina from Dino Crisis. Uh, even more so, <laughs> we talked about. Uh, Asura being a fan, like, hardcore Capcom pick. Regina is even more so that. Dino Crisis has to be the one game that I feel like no one has played, but everyone wants to say that <laughs> they like or something like that, you know? You guys haven't played Dino Crisis. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, she's there. I don't have much of an idea. Again, like, dude, I haven't even played Dino Crisis. But just put her in, man. I don't know. I was just like a here, here's here's a little here's a little treat for the Capcom faithful. Uh Regina she could use dinosaurs in her moveset. That would be cool. She's got like, guns and stuff. Uh I don't know, just put her in. And then Strider. Strider is one of these characters who feels he feels more like a honestly, he's more of a versus game character than a, a 2D action side scroller character you know <laughs> like he's been in more fighting games than he has been non-fighting games so at this point he's just sort of one of those like you gotta have him he's been in i think he's been in every versus game every versus game where he was like applicable Str strider's been in there um yeah uh uh it's just one of those characters just sort of a, a core roster roster member i generally tried to avoid on, on the capcom side i generally tried to avoid characters who you know i did a little bit of research and some of them maybe because capcom sometimes they'd only publish games and they don't quite develop them and there could be some rights issues so i generally try to stay away from characters that i wasn't like a hundred percent on them having the rights to uh but strider strider is the only one that i was like yeah because i mean 
technically because the original technically strider is a manga character who was then adapted into a capcom game who was then included in the fighting games right very weird history um but he uh the 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 so in order for him to be in one of these games there does have to be a, a handshake between capcom and like the original publisher and creator of the character but i think that they're cool with it i'm sure that it's a nice residual so the the dude who the creator of strider seems like a chill dude about him showing up in these games um i'm sure he likes getting the paycheck <laughs> uh uh so not much of a problem there I, I don't envision it suddenly becoming a problem to have strider in a game like this next up is the Darkstalkers members and uh unfortunately i only have two here i would have liked to have a third one but for reasons that will soon become very funny uh, i've only included two those are this was difficult uh i've gone with morrigan morrigan is the obvious one uh she is the mascot of the of the of the franchise uh she just sort of has to be in these games you know uh she is has she been in more versus games than darkstalkers games I think so. I think she is actually, <laughs> or or like as many, you know. Uh, Morgan's one of those characters who has to be here. She's a, a a very popular part of the Darkstalkers universe for two very very good reasons. <laughs> two very good reasons. Her boobs. People uh, like the big boob character. Speaking of big boob characters, Anakaris. So this is personal bias because I love Anakaris. He's my favorite Darkstalkers character. I cry because he's so freaking bad in VSAV. <laughs> um, but visually, I think he's awesome. He is he is just just pure eye candy. I mean, among there are, Darkstalkers is like a an education in fantastic animation. But among those, my favorite has always been Anakaris. Anakaris pronunciation, whatever. Uh, just all the neat stuff they do with him, like phasing his limbs in and out, uh, him shape-shifting and morphing into, like, sarcophagus and stuff like that. Uh, this funky moveset with, her, with him turning into pyramids and shooting his limbs out from, like, the ground and stuff like that. Just super cool. Um, he is also, uh, gameplay-wise, a uh, a big-body character, which the Capcom side up to this point doesn't doesn't quite have um but he is meant to be gigantic he is like nine feet tall or something like that he is always represented as like this massive uh lumbering character and uh i think he'd be cool to have on the roster next up monster hunter so monster hunter was a great inclusion in infinite uh it was really nice to uh i consider the monster hunter is what i would consider to be uh one of the other pillars of capcom um monster hunter arguably carried them through their very rough period and uh uh in the the 2010s and kind of gave them enough support and stability to kind of be a little bit adventurous and try new things uh which has led to their kind of modern revival uh so monster hunter is an important part of the capcom uh history and and brand and stuff like that uh and hey it's super popular people love monster hunter uh she's a really cool character in infinite and um you, you could you could even expand it i think like in in another game you could have like a male and female hunter as opposed to just the female one you know if you want to like expand the the concept what's nice about monster hunter as a series is that you're only really going to have one character from it and it's the player character so i don't have to stress too much about including three monster hunters on here <laughs> so that's nice now next up is another pillar which is mega man okay full disclosure i got very greedy there's five mega man characters on this roster um <laughs> we'll get to it uh i i justify i can justify most of them as saying okay first of all yeah i think Mega Man is a huge part of capcom he was butting heads with ryu for the title of mascot of the whole company um Mega Man is just one of those i don't know he's just like a very beloved character i'm biased in the sense that i absolutely adore Mega Man. big part of my childhood and life <laughs> and interests um I own back there. I own art books. 
I own manga. I own a lot of stuff <laughs> Mega Man related. So I got greedy here. But... There are so many Mega Man games that are across so many platforms that you get to actually represent a lot of cool parts of Capcom's history, multiple different eras, multiple different systems. Uh, and I've gone with maybe some non-obvious picks. Maybe you could say that these are like, I don't know, because I think that some people might be might not like these, but I'm a big Mega Man fan and these would make me happy. So I imagine that other big Mega Man fans would find these inclusions cool. Um, and that is that uh, the Mega Man I have gone with is Mega Man EXE. So EXE, number one, represents Game Boy, like, handheld titles, which there isn't a lot of, like, pure handheld representation uh, for Capcom, but they have some really cool history on handhelds, and the Battle Network series is great. I love Battle Network. Uh, the Battle Network collection somehow managed to become, like, the highest-selling or like second highest selling game in the series or a release. It's not so much a game as it is a release. Uh, somehow, somehow it managed that. So um, a lot of people like Mega Man. There's also an entire generation of people who will tell you that uh, EXE is their Mega Man. That's the one that they grew up with. Uh, and he has a great potential for a fighting game move set. There are so many different uh, chip attacks and uh, different like style transformations from his series that you could draw on. I think aesthetically he would be really cool how you represent a digital character in a physical space moving around and teleporting and, and zipping and doing his crazy virtual stuff. <laughs> um, I think EXE would be a really cool pick, uh, uh, perhaps unexpected, but uh, representing a really strong part of the Mega Man series that generally isn't doesn't get too much love doesn't get too much representation it's usually classic series or x series which makes sense um but uh for as great as those games are and as many people played them not not as much representation in stuff like this so i would say Mega Man exe that's my case for him next up is zero from Mega Man Zero, specifically that version so this is uh it's more game boy representation i guess uh, but the Zero series is just... So first of all, it's Zero. Zero is a fan favorite. I think that even if it's this different design of him, he, there's still a lot of appeal for Capcom fans and Mega Man fans especially um, in just the character of Zero. So I don't think it's much of like, oh no, it would have to be the X series design or anything like that. Um, I personally have a huge soft spot for this version of Zero. It's my favorite version of him. Um, my favorite Mega Man game... <laughs> uh one of the one that always jostles for for first place with uh Mega Man 6 uh is Mega Man 03. Zero 03 is like one of the best games in the franchise. Ah, I don't want to get side, too sidetracked talking about it. I'm sure going to try not to nerd out too badly. The Zero series is fantastic and the only representation that is gotten in a game like this is is he in Project Cross Zone? I don't know. I don't know if this like few, I, there's no real like official term for him. For this version like future zero or something like that uh is in svc chaos which you know is like maybe like we could get him in like another game <laughs> than that maybe i don't want to play svc chaos to <laughs> to uh to uh to do that to, to, to play as him. Um, but he does have an existing fighting game moveset. Uh, you don't even have to use that one. You could, you could, you could probably come up with an entirely different one just because of the fact that the zero games themselves are essentially like 2d character action games. Um, so much inspiration to draw on. Uh, yeah. Future zero next up for classic series representation, uh, base original base slight bias base is another one of my favorite Mega Man characters. I love him. I think he's so cool. Um, he's a little bit more villain representation, which otherwise we don't have. This is technically, I'm looking at it, and up till now, this is the first one. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, Base is another, he's a fan favorite Mega Man character. Um, some people might want Proto Man for classic series rep. Uh, I went with Base just because, number one, villain stuff. Uh, and also, I don't know, man, I just think he would, he would be super cool 
I just think he would be cool. I want to see bass in something, man. Uh, uh, he's got a good amount of material to uh, adapt into a fighting game. He's been he's been in, in enough games, enough solo games and stuff like uh, you, you've got Mega Man and bass, and then you've got Mega Man Ten. That's at least at least two. <laughs> um, plus, he's got some stuff from Mega Man Seven. So uh, yeah, you you could totally you've got you've got material to work with for for him. And now. If you're not a big Mega Man fan, you might not, this might be weird to you, but the X representation, the X series rep, uh, I'm giving it to Magma Dragoon. So nope, not Sigma, not X, not that version of Zero, uh, Magma Dragoon. If you are a Mega Man fan, this is probably really cool. <laughs> uh, Magma Dragoon is a fan favorite. He's probably the most popular of the Mavericks. Not too many... Generally, the individual, like, bosses in Mega Man games have, like, you know, everyone is someone's favorite for the most part, but it's rare to have one character who everyone agrees is, like, if not the coolest, like, one of the coolest. Like, the top ones that uh, Magma Dragoon is kind of a rallying point among Mega Man, um, like, stage, like, minor bosses. Uh, and the and the Mavericks from the X series. There are many many reasons he is so well liked. Um, he is really important to the story. He is an actual very plot critical character to the X series. He is a really interesting uh, villain in the series. Uh, he has a cool stage. Everyone loves the fact that oh, you can take the ride armor into his boss fight and stuff like that, and you can fight him in the ride armor. Uh, and also, he is just Akuma. You might notice that Akuma is not on this roster, but he kind of is, you know? He kind of is, if you if you include Magma Dragoon. Uh, I think people would just be really... I think Mega Man fans like myself would be really psyched to see Magma Dragoon in a game like this. It's a it's a deep pull, but I, I, think it's, I think it's a good one. I believe in it. And then finally, this is maybe the most disagreeable one on the roster. The fifth this is the only series that gets five reps. Um, it's Prometheus from the ZX games. This is me getting really greedy, like really greedy. I really wanted to represent ZX because I like those games a lot. They're really cool. And uh, they're also DS representation. Not uh, not a lot of like actual DS games yet here. I wanted another villain. A lot of Mega Man villains. I think Mega Man is a good series to pull on for villains because there's just... There are so many. <laughs> you know, it's practically based around boss fights. So um, Prometheus, it was either between Prometheus or Pandora, and Prometheus won out in my edgelord heart. Uh, he just, you know, he's just, I don't know, man, he's just cool. He has a, a, a cool moveset to uh, draw on for a fighting game character. I think you could design a lot, uh, some, some neat stuff visually from him. He has a scythe. I mean, come on, man. You could pick him out. Prometheus is the is the one character on the Capcom side that I would say, okay. If I turned this roster in to like my boss or something, and they said take out Prometheus, I'm not really gonna fight it. I'm not really gonna fight it too hard. <laughs> uh if I had to replace him with anything, it would be uh with so there's no power stone on this roster. It would probably be with a power stone character or another Darkstalker. Jedha, or maybe Tal Bane. Maybe Tal Bane. Because I think the Capcom site is actually a little bit... I, I definitely managed to include a lot of uh, villainous characters. Actually, how many? I'm actually not sure. I'd have to go in and count. Um, but uh, Tal Bane, maybe. People like... People, Tal Bane's cool. Uh, yeah. Next up is Mike Hagar. Hagar is basically just a versus series character at this point. They won't put him in Street Fighter. If they're not going to put him in Street Fighter, then by God, uh, he is going to end up in a Marvel game. He's been in the last two. And I'm, I've seen some people who are like, oh, do we need Hagar? I think we need Hagar. I think Hagar, I think Hagar is great. People just love the concept of him. He's a pro wrestler who became the mayor and he has this, he goes on this ridiculous beat him up journey in the final fight games. And uh, he's just got a great personality, big, loud, boisterous American, <laughs> as depicted by the Japanese. Um, very popular character 
uh, not just with people liking him, but also with people playing him. He is a very popular assist in 3 and Infinite. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it. at this point, to me, I don't know if it would really feel like a versus game without Hagar. I think he's got to be in there. He's also a uh, final fight and namely beat em up representation, which uh, we haven't had up to this point on the list. And hey, Capcom has a long history with beat em ups. So I think it's uh, good to include him. And finally, what I would consider the last uh, pillar series of modern Capcom is Devil May Cry. So I uh, have included four Devil May Cry characters that I think are pretty, I think people would like to see and I think have really good potential or ones that have just been in the, in the games already. So first off, Dante, of course, um, has a huge move set <laughs> as represented by Marvel 3 and Infinite. With Leon, he is the one of uh, 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 the most or second most popular male character for Capcom. People freaking love Dante. It would be great to see him in a new game uh, in his DMC5 design, you know, update it to the modern, you know, what's happening in the series and all that. Uh, and then to back him up is Nero. Uh, Nero is a character that a lot of people really wanted. I think that it's, I don't know if in a pre DMC5 world, there was that very much demand for him. But in a post-DMC5 world, oh yeah, no, people people really like Nero. And he's got some great... <laughs> Look, if in Marvel Infinite, Nero replaced Spencer, would you really, would you, would you be upset? I think, I think everyone would have been okay with that. Uh, I think everyone would have been okay with like, okay, well, a different robot arm character, right? Uh, he's definitely got his own flavor, his own style of gameplay with all the arm, arm shenanigans he's got going on. On top of just the general Devil May Cry, like guns and, and swords and and crap. So uh, Nero, yeah, uh, put him in. And then sort of to complete the, tri the that sort of trinity of the DMC5 characters is uh not v but virgil v virgil you know what in if you were to if you were to include him maybe in some like super or something you could you could include v you could maybe include v in something like that obviously people kind of freaking hate this character because of how he is in marvel 3 but as a fighting game character he's i don't know man he's just got that he's just got that cool factor he's like <laughs> How are you not going to include Virgil? Why was he not an infinite? Why was it like, seriously, why not? He has a, a very distinctive move set. All of his stuff with like summoning the swords and things like that. Uh, just, he's so anime, man. And he's extremely popular. Are, are you, are you telling me like he, he's, he's just, he hits every single base. Uh, great character design. Um, very popular character among players. Several memes, you know, he's like, he, <laughs> The DMC5 Virgil memes have, memes have been going strong for like seven years, and I don't expect them to let up anytime soon. Uh, the the storm that is approaching, you know, you're telling me you you don't want to put that in a in a versus game or like a remix of that, and then you get the Dante Nero Virgil kind of trinity, uh, and then finally uh, for DMC is Lady. So I wanted the fourth DMC character, and I went with Lady because I think that she is just a really good. I don't know, just a good pick. I think in, in the same way that I talked about like Deadpool being a good generalist character of like swords and just ammunition and stuff. Lady's that kind of walking arsenal style of character uh, who could have a lot of really flashy, cool gun kata and acrobatic stuff and flipping and dipping and shooting, shooting and booting around. Um, and I don't know, she's just cool. She's got a great design. She's got a great look. Like another character who's like, oh, cool, Lady. That's nice. That's nice that she's in the game. Weird. It it feels like she should have been in three. And for some reason, Trish was just strange. Now, this one, you might have no idea what I'm talking about. It is So from Kunitsugami, uh, Path of the Goddess, the brand new Capcom game that just that just came out that no one's talking about that is reviewing incredibly well. <laughs> so um, I look at so so if you haven't played it, uh, honestly, go download the demo on Steam. It rules. It's a really cool game. It is a tower defense hack and slash game with just some really solid mechanics. Uh, I think a lot of people, I saw someone say that it is the new Okami in that it is one of these games that has just a great vision 
it executes it really well. It has a, has a, a, a nice visual style. And um, in five years, we're going to look back on it and wonder why the hell people didn't play or did people didn't buy it more or talk about it more. <laughs> so go play Kunitsugami, check it out. And so is the main playable character of the game. So if you're uh, there is there is a lot of cool stuff that you could use as inspiration for a fighting game character from that game. So it is essentially like so has his own move set of. Uh, all of this hack and slash stuff. He's got these sort of dance. Uh, it combines like regular strikes with these sort of like dance attacks that form different chain combos. You could, you could do like give him all sorts of like cool um, target combo type things uh, uh, and make him that sort of like a, a chaining character. Give him like rekkas or something like that. A bunch of different follow-ups and, and sorts of moves to represent that part of it. And then you can have... Um, because in the game you like recruit you like uh, uh, free villagers from like corruption stuff that's trapping them, and then recruit them. You then you like give them jobs and stuff and different roles in the tower defense segment, uh, and you can have easily have moves where you like summon out a villager to attack for you, and and then you know they they jump back out and stuff like that. The goal of each level of that game is to get the shrine maiden, princess lady Yushiro to like the end of the stage, so that. Uh, she can like purify a gate. You can easily have a, a neat mechanic where like maybe you build up to uh, some big like level three that involves Yushiro doing some huge thing or something, some huge spell on the opponent. And that's like the big finisher. Oh, just like how the levels in the game finish off. Also just a visually, because like, you know, you like you slash the sword in game and, and like it sort of cuts open with these like ribbons and stuff like that. Uh, just I think just perfect, perfect material for a fighting game character. Uh, I would love to see so in a game like this. And now Cat from Breath of Fire 2. So Breath of Fire is a, a really cool series. And it's it's uh, it showcases something that nothing else on this list besides, uh, I guess, Battle Network really does, which is uh, Capcom's history with RPGs and JRPGs specifically. Um, Breath of Fire, you know, turn-based RPG series uh lots of great great characters and there's many that you could have picked from i didn't go with the main character there's a problem with the main character of breath of fire of all the games because they all share the same thing they all share this problem the main <laughs> it's a stupid issue but the main character of breath of fire is named ryu and like you know like it's a dumb problem like it shouldn't be a problem but like it is you know like you don't want to have two Ryu's on the, on the, that's just, yeah, it's just a logistical problem. Um, so I went with Kat with two T's because she is a, uh, people like her. There's like the furry waifu thing. Like she's a nineties anime, like uh, tiger girl, I guess. Um, but I don't know. She, she did, uh, uh, she is a fan favorite character. Uh, even though she's only, I think only in, in one game, she's only in two. People like her a lot. Uh, she has multiple references in other Capcom games with like co DLC costumes. And you can like literally just, there is straight up in Street Fighter VI's character creator. There is just like an option for her like face stripes pattern. Like you can just recreate her in that game. Uh, so there's clearly like uh, some longstanding love for her uh, within Capcom themselves. And I think it would be cool to, you can, you can include like, oh, in her level three or something, a bunch of cameos from different Breath of Fire characters would be, that would be cool. Uh, I think people, it would be fun to have her. It would be, it would be a great little slice of Capcom to be like, hey, there's also this thing. Um, Because there hasn't been anything Breath of Fire related in a very long time. Speaking of things that haven't had anything happened to them in a very long time rival schools uh, i have two rival schools characters on here i i, I kind of wanted three but i settled for two so uh i put batsu in here the protagonist the ostensible protagonist of the series just he's a good all-around all-around face figurehead to represent rival schools uh just sort of like an all-around brawler type of fighter uh very obvious inclusion and then second off um was Zaki. So uh, Zaki is probably not the most popular Rival Schools character. A lot of people might point to like Akira or like Tiffany or something like that. But I just, 
I think Zaki just has like the coolest design ever. She is so sick, and I am really surprised that this character is not more popular. Even in just like, you know how there's characters who seemingly only exist in fan art? <laughs> I am so surprised that she is not one of them because man, she is freaking cool. It's such a neat aesthetic. She fights with like chains and stuff. Ghost Rider is not on the Marvel roster, so hey, you get you get you can get Ghost Rider chain nonsense going on. Um, I just think she would be really, really dope <laughs> to see in action in like a modern, a modern incarnation, a modern character model and stuff like that. Uh, now, this might be, you might consider this one a long shot, but hear me out. It's Lin Kurosawa from Alien vs. Predator. Now, I know I said earlier that I, I have tried to avoid characters who uh, might have some rights issues and ownership issues. Just, you know, stuff is split up across different companies. But but okay, here's the thing. So, the AVP arcade like beat 'em up. That game has forever been in uh, uh, copyright hell. It's been in licensing hell, right? Even when Capcom did that beat 'em up bundle a while back, it wasn't in there, and I assume it was because of of rights holder issues. So this character is 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 like I don't a lot of oh she's never gonna show up in anything again. Here's the thing. Who owns Alien vs. Predator? Who owns the dis distribution rights to that series? Would, and would jointly would jointly own the AVP game with Capcom? Fox. Well, who owns Fox now? Disney. You know who else Disney owns? Marvel. So by the magic of corporate acquisitions... The one, genuinely, I think the one game that this character could show up in is this game. If it was going to happen any time, any place, it is in a Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Because they're already working with Disney in some capacity. All they have to do is go through the grapevine and play some telephone and just remind them that, like, hey, you know how, like... Dude, I guarantee you, whoever is at Fox, does it? they don't even know what this is. They're going to call them up and they're going to go, what What are you talking about? And as long as they can get through to them, they can, because they have the, through, they have, they have the in with Marvel. They can, I, I think it can happen. I think it could happen. Uh, she she could be so cool in a fighting game. She's got plenty of like she again. She's another gun and sword character, uh, but she's also like in in many ways like a grappler. Like she has these awesome moves where she like jumps up and like stabs her sword into an alien and then like flips it over and like uh, 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 submission holds it and then like shoots it and she can like jump up and like shoot the gun downwards and hit people off the ground and stuff and and she could be a really cool character. I think there's 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 potential for it. You could include actually no, you probably can't include the alien or the predator in here. It would probably just be Lynn. I think I think if you try to include alien or predator, it would be um it would be even even an even bigger rights kerfuffle. Let's let's just stick let's just stick to Lynn. <laughs> Next up, uh, a series that has again not gotten a lot of love from Capcom. It is Samanosuke Akechi from Onimusha. Now, I will admit I don't know very much about Onimusha. I should. I should play one of these games at some point in time. Um, but it's got some real fans out there. And I think that if you are wanting to encapsulate a wide range of Capcom's history, uh, Onimusha was a big series. There's a lot of Onimusha games, man. And there's some big fans of this series. Uh, Samanosuke is the... I, I went with him because he seems like the most main of characters... Uh, there's other main characters I know. There's other protagonists in those games. Uh, but Samanosuke seems like he's the protag of like the first three games at the very least. So maybe maybe an Onimusha fan would say that there was a better pick for uh, uh, the, the figure for that series. But um, I went with him. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure that there is plenty of stuff that you could adapt into a, into a, a move set. Um, but this is mostly just, I think it would be nice. I know this is a series that has been in many ways left to the wayside for the past few generations. And it would be, uh, I think it would be nice. I think it would be very sweet of them to acknowledge it with a little, uh, give it a little bit of love, you know?
and uh, a game that got no love from seemingly anyone. Um, it's Gene from God Hand. So uh, our one other next to next to Hagar, our one other uh, uh, beat him up uh, uh, character to represent that part of the of the company. God Hand, definitely a different kind of beat him up being all 3d and crap but uh god hand a car- a game which infamously was probably over hated on its release and in recent years has gotten a big critical reevaluation. and now the general consensus is that this game is actually really sick and was did not deserve to fail as hard as it did gene has uh, uh you, you could do tons of cool uh different strings and stuff uh to adapt his god hand move set into a fighting game oh god there's uh, it it it, it practic- the character practically designs itself so i think gene just makes a lot of sense you know and it's one of those things that big capcom fans there would be so here's the thing it's the kind of character and there's a couple other characters like some of the more obscure ones on this list gene might be the most obscure at least for the capcom side now that i'm looking at it uh, Gene is like the type of character who would make certain people so excited that they would go tell other people about the game and they would do like free PR. That's another advantage to having these sorts of super like cult classic characters <laughs> in the game is to a certain level, they just generate buzz by themselves because the people who are into them will champion them so hard that when they when they see them in the on the roster they go i gotta tell everyone now everyone go buy this game god hands in it (laughs) that kind of a thing um and it would just i don't know it'd make a lot of people really happy i think it would be a perfect fit for a fighting game and now finally the very last character on the roster uh last character on the capcom side uh, I was I was really struggling to think who should I fit in here, and I went with a couple, and none of them really satisfied me. For I felt like I needed something to really round out the list and really complete it, and the one I came up with was Ruby Heart. <laughs> so Ruby Heart is a is unique in the fact that I said Strider, you know, I said Strider at this point is basically a versus game character. Ruby Heart is a versus game character. She only exists in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. She was supposed to later on get her own game, like some mobile pirate game, but that got canceled. Uh, and so she has only ever been in Marvel 2. Um, there is a rumor that she was originally like a rejected Darkstalkers character along with a Mingo. Uh, that's been disproven by like concept art and some developer interviews and stuff like that. So no, she was made and a Mingo, were made specifically for Marvel 2 because they just had the extra time on their hand and they said, hey, we, we can make some new original characters. We'll put them on the Capcom side. Uh, she is sort of like the... She's basically the main character of that game in the extremely limited lore that it has and story. Uh, but man, there's something about Ruby Heart because, because she is unique to that game. Ruby Heart is like a symbol of Marvel of Marvel versus Capcom and especially Marvel too. Um, I've said on like my podcast and stuff that Mar- Marvel Two, the reason that game is so important to people is that it's like a symbol of love. <laughs> and Ruby Heart is like the symbol of that. I think that if you were at like people who aren't into the series won't have any idea who Ruby Heart is, but let's be real. If you're at EVO or you're watching the EVO stream and the Street Fighter bracket wraps up and the tournament's all over and they say, hey guys, we got one more thing for you. And they play this trailer and and they reveal a Marvel vs. Capcom 4 and all these different characters, everyone's freaking out. Oh, 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 oh. If that trailer ends with, with Ruby Hart picking up the anchor or putting on the big old pirate hat people are gonna cry people are gonna cry in the audience uh it's gonna be a it would be a big a big moment culturally you know 
for the the fighting game community these games have a very special place in the fighting game community and i think including a character like ruby heart is kind of an olive branch uh from the publisher to the players like hey no or maybe let's say the developers to the players like hey no we get it we're fans too um ruby hearts in here because it's awesome to have ruby heart in there <laughs> i thought the fact that she, man she's just a cool character she's just a cool character um and it's sort of neat in a meta way to have a character who represents the ser the crossover series right you could also maybe say ingrid does that but i don't think people are going to get nearly as excited for ingrid <laughs> i don't even hate ingrid <laughs> i think she is definitely overhated but <laughs> I'd pop off for Ruby Heart. <laughs> so overall, I would like to think that the Capcom list that I made represents a good uh, spread of the company and its history. You've got what I consider like the important pillars um, of like the big important names that are mean a lot to the brand. You got Street Fighter, Resident Evil, uh, Monster Hunter, Mega Man, and Devil May Cry. Those are like the big five for me. Uh, and then along with a smattering of other series, very popular fan favorite things like Darkstalkers, um, Strider, a couple of kind of deeper Capcom polls like Regina, uh, uh, Lin, uh, Samanosuke, Gene, you know, those characters, uh, a couple just you know, other just Striders, so obligatory. Um, and then you got a, a, a brand new stuff, like brand new IP uh, exciting new stuff that Capcom is putting out. Like, right, that's what that... Like, hey, Capcom still makes cool um, experimental stuff that isn't just, like, a triple-A slop um, with uh, 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 So from Kunitsugami. Now, the one thing, again, that's negotiable is Prometheus. <laughs> uh, I might very well... If I was to remake this, I might just swap him out with, like, John Talbane or something. Uh, or a Power Stoner power stone power a power stoner <laughs> uh i think overall in total i made the list of course i think it's good but i, I think this is actually a good general list i could have gone all if i was going to be super selfish i would have just made um a, a Mega Man fighting game tier uh, uh roster or something like that i think that if this game were to come out mind you this is like 60 characters you're imagining like that's post that's after like all the dlc that would come out for it and everything <laughs> but if this game were to come out maybe 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 it would be interesting to go in and look like who would you maybe cut for to just who, how would you cut this down to just a core roster um i didn't really think about that that seems like a little i don't know that's too much effort for me um but for this as a final roster for a game that's going to be played for a long time to come i would say I think this would be pretty satisfying. Of course, there's always going to be holes. There's always going to be things missing. There's always going to be what could have been. Uh, but I think this covers a really good variety of the Marvel side um, and the Capcom side. And it represents uh, the histories, the various platforms and styles and all the crazy places that they can go. You know, I think that's what's great about Marvel versus Capcom is it feels so disparate. But that's almost like the the disparity, the incongruity of those rosters, um, it is is kind of perfect, right? It it almost becomes the the centering point around them. Because you look at Marvel and you're like, what the what the hell is this? You've got like mutants and people with super soldier serum and like robot guys and freaking Norse gods and aliens and it's like the crazy and vampires and like nothing makes any sense. If you were to just put it on paper or just, you know, like list it all out, it would look completely random, but it all works and meshes together because it, it's just, you know, it's the Marvel Universe. And same with Capcom. It's like, hey, this is a company that has this massive library, probably only second to like Nintendo in terms of of just sheer just hits, you know, and in terms of variety probably has them beat, you know, like, oh, my God. So look at all the stuff that's on offer here. Fighting games, horror games. Um, they've got puzzle puzzle games and stuff. They have visual novels. Uh, they have platformers. They have RPGs, um, beat 'em ups, uh, all sorts of different things. And uh, the the crazy amount of variety is sort of like the appeal. And I think that's why these two 
these these two companies sort of work together. I wasn't planning on making this a diatribe about the nature of Marvel versus Capcom or why it's appealing. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious uh, what you think of this, this roster. Um, mind you, uh, 60 characters is very generous. So... <laughs> Uh, it's also not super realistic. <laughs> um, maybe for maybe for a, a a tag team game, actually, it might be. I don't know how many fighters uh, like. I don't know how much like Dragon Ball fighters had by the end or or something like that. But. Uh, uh, let me know uh, maybe what your list would look like. Do you think my list is stupid? Who would what would you replace? Uh, was there anything I completely missed out on that I forgot about? I think I I think this I think this is a pretty a pretty good list. Uh, let me know why you like Marvel vs. Capcom, and if you would like to see this game, I don't know, just talk about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, you can go check out my main channel. Right, I forgot to plug this. You can go check out my main channel where I put together actual scripted content that isn't just me rambling in front of the camera uh, with a bunch of PNGs in front of me.